Alison Davis is very active in the world of disability. She has spina bifida, emphysema and osteoporosis and tells something of her story now to my colleague. Twenty years ago, she was determined to take her own life. Life was very tough for me at the time. Uh, I had uh, very bad physical pain. Um, my spine is collapsing. I have several disabling conditions. Uh, but one of them entails that my spine is collapsing, uh, trapping nerves as it goes. So um, I was suffering extreme pain physically. Um, several uh, aspects of my life were very difficult also. Uh, and I began to think that I had no reason to live. And over time it became a, a definite wish to die. I wanted to die for ten years. For the first five of the ten years I several times took steps to end my life. Um, it was a very mixed up time and I don't remember all of the attempts but one particularly sticks in my mind and I don't think it was unusual. I um, slashed my wrists with an old rusty pen knife. I um, took a large overdose of painkillers. I swallowed a whole bottle of martini and then I lay down in bed and cuddled my favourite teddy bear and waited to die. I was... I thought I'd done it. I thought I... I thought everything was in place and that this was the end. But fortunately, obviously I thought unfortunately at the time, my friend um, Sue arrived unexpectedly. She was able to let herself into my house and... Um, she saw I was losing consciousness and called 999. I was taken to hospital and I was treated against my will. Um, I, I refused stomach pumping and the doctor said, um, if we don't pump your stomach, you'll die. And I just laughed and said, well, that's what I want. So they waited until I lost consciousness and did it anyway. Just take me into the mind of that person who, because of a physical condition, was determined that that was the best best way to go I couldn't see any future for myself um, or rather I couldn't see any acceptable future for myself everything looked everything looked black nothing nothing made me happy nothing nothing made me want to go on um, Death seemed very attractive. I thought of it as a, a complete ending of everything. Um, I, I thought it would just be oblivion, and that's what I wanted, oblivion. Um, but it actually wasn't available to you. How did you feel about that? You were angry. Yeah, I, when I woke up, I was, I was, I was really angry with the doctors for having saved my life. Now, of course, I'm eternally grateful, um, but I've never been able to tell them that. Um, if uh, assisted suicide had been legal at that time, I, th there's no question but that I would have requested it. And under the um, rules that apply in other places where assisted suicide is legal, for instance, um, Switzerland, uh, the American states of uh, Oregon and Washington, I would have qualified under the rules that they propose or that they that hold in those places and um, I would have requested it and my request would have been accepted and had it been accepted and of course I wouldn't be here uh, talking to you now and um, I would have missed the best years of my life. I'm wondering if we can extract, you know, to help other people, what it is that you need to be able to not feel like you did and to be able to come through it? I was fortunate in that I had many friends, particularly Colin, <coughs> who's now my full-time assistant, who helped me with practical support, with emotional support when time still seemed very bleak. Because although I stopped actually taking steps to, to end my life, after five years, I still really wanted to die for another five years. And it was only because I had the 
good support of friends who had the courage to say that's not the right way to go. Your life does have value. You know, it has value to us, and we we will help you. And and um, <clears throat> eventually, they helped me realise that they were right. That and a trip to India when I met with a group of disabled children who who eventually I started a charity for and who loved me and hugged me and called me mummy. And they also made me realise that there could be a future for me, not just for myself, but because I could do things for other people as well. That it wasn't just a question of me living or dying, but it was a question of what I was going to do with my life. And they helped me realise that there were things that I could do despite the disabilities, despite the same pain, because I still have the same degree of pain now as I had then. What ha what's changed isn't isn't my disability or my level of pain. What's changed is my outlook. Of course, uh, many people can't be as lucky as you, and and have someone who cares for them, have friends who encourage them. Uh, they're just stuck and facing a future of pain. I think that it may be so, but I think that support is there if if society pulls together and uh, gets it for suffering people. We, we have hospices, for instance, and palliative care for physical pain. But I think that legalising assisted suicide would militate against that because we would see the two choices as equal life or death equal decisions you can die if you want, you can live if you want they're both equal choices and the truth is they're not equal choices that life is precious and people who are suffering need help to live with dignity until they die naturally rather than being told that the only dignified death is a procured one.